Okay, so we've run an assay, we've come back and now we want to look at our results. So we go to the task list and we go search. And we open up our scanned vessel. So I'm going to use one that I've done before. Double click on it. So this was an assay I did with my HeLa H2B cells, which have M cherry labeled in the H2B chromatin, and I also added Cytox Green, which is a marker for dead cells, and I did treatments with ocardiac acid and Taxol. So. So the first thing you do is obviously have a little bit of a scroll through your data to see whether everything looks okay, whether something strange has happened. So this first well you can see is very green, it's because this was my control well where I left no cytox. So obviously it's the green channel has tried really hard to focus and try and find some green and it hasn't, so it comes up with a lot of background. <coughs> so you just click on the different wells to look at the data within them. So you, see, you can see here where all the nuclei are labelled red and the dead cells have taken up the green stain. You can scroll through each image here. So obviously I've taken nine fields for view. This one. And you can scroll through your time points here. So I wanted to set up a 48 hour assay for this example, but I left it on till Monday because it was easier to take it off. So you can cut your assay short as well. So I took a lot of data, but when I decide to do my analysis, I can choose not to use all of it. So if you look at the latter time points, you'll see that they've become quite full. So I'm going to stop my assay around about here. So to analyze your results, you follow through this list here, basically. First, we're going to make an image collection, which is a collection of around about three to eight images that best represent your data. So I tend to choose like a very low confluence image, maybe one from very near the end of your essay where it's highly confluent, one that might have a lot of dead cells. Try and get a good range and try not to do too many more than eight because it takes quite a while for it to process to make the definition. So once you've made a collection of cells, then we go on and we make a processing definition, which is where you define the parameters for your masks, and it uses the image collection as a training set to create that mask. And then once you've made your mask, then you go on and launch an analysis job, and it launches that, that mask over all your data, not just the small training set. So the idea with the training set is that you can do a little test run on your mask to see whether it looks good without having to do a full-blown assay. And once, obviously, once you've created these processing definitions, if you've run an assay that's similar again, then you don't have to go through this whole process of making a definition each time. You can just open up one that you've already made. You can make a little image collection for your latest experiment of, you know, three or four pictures, test the definition over it. If it looks good, then you can just run with that one. Or you can make minor changes and save it as a new one, but it makes it a lot quicker. So... <clears throat> To make an image collection, you just choose a picture and add an image collection. So I'm going to use A2, 2. So we go. Add to image collection. And by default, it will come up add to the existing one that was the last person that made one, so you want to go new, and you need to choose your channels, so I'm going to click all three channels, because I took pictures from all three channels, so you click again, add to image collection, and now we'll add it to the existing one, so at the moment it's telling me I've already got one image in this collection, and these are the channels I'm going to take, and so... You just keep doing this for as many pictures as you want to add. For me, I reckon four or five is a good number. So I've already created an image collection because it'll take a little while. It's a bit slow. Um, so this one here.
And so you can scroll through and look at your images. And you can change your parameters over here to, this is just to change how you view it. So if you just want to look at certain channels, you can turn off the phase and just look at your fluorescence. And you can muck around with those a little bit if that helps you visualise. Um, so from here now we're going to create a processing definition. So you go back to your scan vessel. And so now we're going to make a new processing definition. So you choose the image collection that you're going to create it with. So the image collection I've already made is this one here. Continue. So this is a bit that takes a little bit of getting used to um, and you basically just have to fiddle around with different parameters to understand what they do and also in the SM technical note it explains what each of those parameters are to help you understand which ones you should change. So the first thing you do is click preview and it puts a default mask over. So first time around it always takes a lot longer and then from then on it's quite quick. Okay, so now we can have a look through the mask that it's created by default. As you can see over here, it's used all three channels, phase, green, and red. So for the endpoint that I want from this assay, I wanted to look at the total number of cells. So I need to create a mask that counts every single red nuclei. I also wanted to count the number of dead cells, so I need to create a mask that is just for the green channel, just counting all the green positive cells. And then I also wanted to know the percentage of cells that were in mitosis, so I've then gone and created a third mask that just picks up the, the little mitotic cells here. So it depends on what your endpoint is to the sort of mask you make, but I can show you an example of how I would make my mask. So for the total count, I would turn off the channels I don't want to use, so turn off the green. And turn off the phase. And to see what your mask, where your mask is, you need to push preview again. Every time you make a change to see the resulting mask, you have to push preview. So this bit can take some time the first time you make it. It's just about fiddling around and working it out for yourself. And so if you scroll down here, you'll see your masks. So we'll turn our mask on and see what it's picking up. So you can see there it's not picking up everything yet. So now so we'll need to make some changes to make sure it picks up every red cell. So you can then hover over cells to get information about them. So if I hover, I'll zoom in a little bit. So you can zoom in over here. So if I hover over this cell, it's telling me the intensity for the green channel, the red channel. It's telling me about the area of the cell, the eccentricity, and the integrated and mean intensities. Um, the integrated intensity is the total intensity of that spot. The mean intensity is obviously the mean across the whole spot. Um, so you just then need to alter these parameters over here. So you've got to see a few things you can play with. Um, there's a threshold for the fluorescence intensity. 
Adaptive means that it takes into account the background close around that cell in every situation. Fixed means it uses a fixed threshold across the whole um, image. So for me, adaptive tends to work the best. Um, you can alter these fluorescence units. So if you hover over, you can see, for example, that the red fluorescence here is four units for the cell. And if you hover over the background, it's only one. So obviously the difference between them is three. So you could probably bump this up a little higher, maybe, if you wanted to eliminate any of the background. But at the moment, it's not really picking up too much background. So two is probably OK. Um, the other things you can play with here are edge split. So edge split is for when you've got maybe quite confluent cells and they're quite close to each other. So when it's on, it's make sure it divides two areas of fluorescence that are quite close to each other. If you turn it off, then it will, if the areas are quite close to each other, it will count it as one whole cell. So that's really good for me, for example, if I'm doing cytox, when the cells start to die, obviously they start to fragment. So you get quite a lot of blobs of green and you don't want that to count as, you know, say four individual instances, you want it to count it as one cell. So that, that's where you turn the edge split off and it will count it as one unit. And then you've got a sensitivity value. You can scroll up and down to change how sensitive that edge split is. Um, filters that you have, so you can filter on the size of the cell. So you've got minimum and maximum eccentricity, how round they are. So you can play with this too. So you can look at the eccentricity here and you can change these values. Um, again, mean intensity and integrated intensity, you can change them as well. So I just keep altering these values based on what I see here to, to create my mask. So that would take a little while, so I'll open up the one that I've already made to show you. So obviously if you, want, if you wanted to save it, you go File, Save, and you give it a name. So I'm going to open up one that I've already made for this experiment. So this one here. So you want to choose your image collection that you're working with. For us it's this one here. And preview. Okay, so just like before, you can change how you view. You can turn channels on and off to view them. And over here, you've got your information about your processing definition. So for the green channel, I'll turn the mask on here. And you can also adjust how it displays the mask. So for So you can choose blend, overlay, all these things don't actually alter the processing definition, just helps you to visualise them better. So it's, I find it easier to see, or you might want to turn outlines on and make them really thick outlines. That's another way that makes it easier to see it. And so I might turn the red off so you can just see the green channel for this one. And you can zoom in to have a closer look. So if you see, see that all the green are being picked up by the mask. So you're never going to get 100%, but you've just got to get as close as you possibly can and one that fits across the widest range of your assay. So I would spend time moving between all these different images and testing which, once I've changed all my parameters, sorry, this is the green mask, which one fits my assay best. So that's the dead cells, so you can see it's picking up the green ones there. And this was a well that had no cytox in it, so you can see it's picking up none, so that's good. And this is the last one here. So down here is also a summary of the information. And so then if we move on to the red mask, so I'll turn the green mask off and the red mask on. So you can see it's counting every nuclei, so that's going to be my total count. And so you can zoom in to get more information. So from a distance it might not look like it's counted some of these cells, so you might want to zoom in to double check. And so you can see there is actually a blue spot in the middle of it, it's just the whole cell is not 
very bright, but it's at least counted part of the cell, so it's counting it as one instance. And if you see over here, these are the parameters I use to make those masks. So for the red one, I basically used the default. I didn't have. I just brought my threshold down a little bit, so it picked up all these lighter cells, and I left all of the other parameters off. For the green ones, um, there was a little bit of background, so I used the area, the minimum, to be 20, so it didn't pick up any really tiny dots. Um, but that's all the changes I had to make for that processing definition. Um, and I also made one for my mitotic cells, which is here. So the thing to remember with when I'm making the mitotic cell ones, I'm actually, it's actually only using the red channel. So I use the phase to help me visualise which cells are mitotic and not, but the software is, I've actually told it only to use the red channel. So if you look closely, if we just look at red fluorescence, and I preview it, and I turn my mask on. And so this one has picked up. I'll zoom in so you can see them better. The, the cells that are mitotic. So you can see they've got the little metaphase plates. So once I've created my processing definitions, then you can go and run your analysis. So you go back to your raw data, the scanned vessels here. And then you go to the third item on the utilities list, launch analysis job. And again, you leave it on basic analyzer. You choose your processing definition. So for the first time round, I might do the total and dead. And then the next time around, I might do the mitotic. So you can run as many different analyses as you want over your raw data. The raw data always stays there and it's available. To, so you can come back a lot later and ask a different question and create a new processing definition. So you name your results. And then you can choose the time period you're going to use. <coughs> so time range. So start time. And I'm going to finish mine a little earlier. So say Sunday, 12 o'clock. And then you select the wells you want to analyse. So if for some reason you, you've put two assays on the one plate or you haven't used all the wells, you don't have to use, you don't have to analyse everything. And then this here, you can't change anything. This is just a summary of our processing definition that it's going to run. And then you click OK and it will launch the job. So this is all happening on the hard drive of the Inky site. So you can close down your software now and it's still going to run and you're not going to interrupt anybody else. It's all independently running on the machine. Um, It'll give you a time frame that it thinks it's going to take. It tends to overestimate, so it might say it's going to take an hour. I come back in 15 minutes and it's usually done. So it doesn't take as long as it says it's going to. So I'll open my results that I created earlier. Okay, so now if we go to the task list, search and analysis jobs, is where your data will pop up once that analysis is finished. So this one here is the total and dead count. So the first thing I do is I go through a few different wells and check that everything looks okay because you can't just 
assume that the machine knows what it's doing all the time just because you, you've told it some parameters and it's used those to analyse your data. So it's, you've also got to interrogate your data. So I would turn my masks on and go and look and see what they're collect counting. So my green mask and this one is counting none, that's good. And you can see it's counted all myself. So and you can just scroll through a few images, have a look, and see if everything looks okay. To export your results. You, if you just want to export a single picture, you can go to Utilities, uh, Export Current Image. And you can choose what you're going to export, which channel, or whether you want to export a composite JPEG, which is what I usually do, um, location. And then if you push customize with image designer, it allows you to put the um, scale bar on here, which is what they call it the legend, and the time and date. Otherwise, it will just export a plain image with no data on. So then export. You can also export um, a movie or image set. And you can choose to export images from multiple wells, from multiple time points. You can do them as individual images, or you can do them as um, any of these movie outputs. And then to export the actual numbers, you go to here, Graph Export. Let's click it again. And this is where you choose your metric. So for me, I would export the green object count, which is how many images there are how many there are per image. There's a few different ones you can use, but we tend to use green object count and red object count. So then you, I always take grouping off because you can either group it as columns or rows and then it gives you a mean, but I'd like to export every piece of data and then later in Excel you can um, do the averages and get the stats that you need. So you can export only a certain time range or just one time point. Um, You've got three options here. Microplate graph gives you a little overview of all the wells. So this is really handy just to get a quick snapshot. So you can, this is my Cytox green, so this is my death marker. So obviously you can see that my control wells are fine and then with these treatments I'm getting increasing amounts of death. And you can do a graph. So it'll do a graph of each well. I tend to export my raw data and make all the graphs in Excel myself because it gives you a lot more flexibility. And then if you click data export, this is where it exports the data as a TXT file which you can open in Excel. So you just choose your location. Um, I always include the experiment details in the header and also I always click break down data into individual images. Otherwise it just gives you a mean for each well, which is not as helpful. For some reason, one of the points in the well is, is you know, no good or it's miles out, then you might want to exclude that piece of data, but you don't have that option if you don't break it down. And then you export them. Um, and then again, if you want to do the red, so this would be my total count, then I'd do the same thing again. And that's my total count. So I also wanted to highlight on this that you should go back and look at anything that seems strange. So for me, the first thing I would go is, hang on, this third time point looks like it's dropped down. What's going on? This doesn't seem normal. So then you can go back and investigate your data. So go to the third time point and go to the images. So you can see it looks really fuzzy. And so obviously that the machine isn't able to calculate accurate data from that. 
And so here, so I realized something's not right at this time point. So I went back and looked at the machine and it turned out someone had actually opened the drawer right before the scan had started. So obviously they hadn't got the door shut in time the scan had started. So I now know that there's a reason that that time point has dropped down a little bit, so I'll go and remove that from my data. So you can't just sort of trust everything that comes out. If it looks strange, there's probably something wrong. <laughs> um, and just remember that there's, you know, heaps of other users using this machine, so if someone does do something within a scan, they might interrupt yours. It doesn't happen very often, but you just got to watch out for it. And same thing again, if you're doing a scan, then you've got to be really thoughtful and not open the drawers or apply anything while the scan's run. Mm, I think that's probably all you need to know for now.